Welcome to Boston. My name is uh, Max Versace. I am the CEO of Neurala, a Boston-based artificial intelligence company located just steps uh, from here in the Boston Seaport District. Ten years ago, all this area was uh, a bunch of parking lots, uh, inexpensive uh, parking for commuter rails, and uh, the only building was the courthouse right behind me. Uh, many things can change in ten years. Take a look. So as you've seen, in 10 years, a lot has changed in the Boston Seaport District. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about industrial manufacturing. Not much has changed in that environment. Uh, we thought that 10 years ago, uh, 2022 was going to be the year of lights out manufacturing, Industry 4.0, robotics, automation, AI, implemented at scale to enable uh, manufacturer to run without people. Reality is very far from that. Uh, it is true that the sale of robots has increased, it has tripled in the past 10 years. In 2018 alone, uh, 420,000 robots were shipped, but the majority of those robots ended up in the traditional use cases of automotive and uh, chip manufacturing. So not much has percolated into other areas. The first implementation of robotics happened in the 60s and the same happened for artificial intelligence. So the beginning was uh, synchronous, if you will, but uh, while robotics has evolved uh, in the production lines, uh, AI has not. And one would wonder why, what is the holdup for artificial intelligence to fulfill their promises. A recent study by Capgemini has shown that only one out of three companies has implemented an AI initiative you know, within, within their, their companies. So what's the holdup? Um, if we look at AI in manufacturing, there are in particular three main issues that is facing today to prevent, that prevents to, to this, this technology to achieve scale. The first one is data. In order to train deep learning models, which is the branch of AI that has found the, the more widespread uh, application in the world, you need a, a so-called balanced data set. Uh, this basically means that you need to collect, in case, for instance, of a, a quality inspection, visual inspection uh, application, you need to collect a, a certain number of good data, so good products, but also data about defective products and the different kind of defects that your product might have. And that's where the problem arises. Uh, if you take, for instance, an EMA machine, uh, those machines are so good that they produce very little def defective products, which uh, eliminates or hinders the ability to deploy AI models because you don't have the, the right data to train them. So that's an issue. The second issue is availability of AI talent. Um, AI PhDs are scarce. In 2018, there were about 22,000 AI PhDs in the world. And if you take just the manufacturing companies in US, there are about 300,000 of them just in the US. And so you can see that there is already a gap between the demand of AI talent, uh, which is very large, and the availability of an AI PhD, which takes four years to train. So that's the second issue. And the third issue is a compounding issue. So it takes the, the prior two plus add some more. So the cost of uh, building, maintaining an AI model depends on the cost of data collection, depends on the cost of hiring AI personnel, but also depends on other things such as hardware and the cost associated with finding, deploying, maintaining that, that hardware. And so very often, uh, even if you have the data, even if you have the talent, the ROI or the return on investment of spending uh, a certain amount of money in an AI application is not justified by the savings that the company might realize. So all of these three issues play a very important role in creating a blockage for AI to, to spread from you know, the labs to the real world applications. So in order for this to happen, you have to overcome these technical challenges, but also you need urgency from the parts of manufacturers. And in the pandemic, you know, with all the negatives, that has brought us some positive have arisen uh, for the man industrial manufacturers. So this company have found themselves in a, in a bind. Um, disruption of workforce availability in the supply chain, social distancing, uh, fluctuation in the demand from consumers now working from home. So different things were needed. So all of these elements have conspired to give manufacturers of all sorts the right motivation to uh, inject more automation, more AI, and more robotics into their premises. So now the motivation is there, the urgency is there, 
uh, from all over the manufacturing world and the logistics, etc. And uh, the technology now has to step up and solve those uh, issues, the data issue, the talent and the cost. So fortunately, the technology has moved forward and I can give you some example. Uh, in the data uh, issue, for instance, Neural has been working with a, a very large Japanese pharma company to uh, field their AI application in order to enable the analysis of chemical compounds and look for outlier, uh, for instance, in, in uh, uh, very complex uh, chemicals that are screened daily from researchers in this Japanese company. So in this case, as opposed to collect a balanced data set of good data uh, and bad data, in particular bad particulates in the fluid dynamics compounds, the uh, company was able to just upload uh, a few good samples of good compounds and then be alerted whenever a deviation occurred in their data set. And so they can focus on the outliers and essentially eliminate the need of collecting a, a lot of data with you know def defective compounds. So that's the data challenge which has been solved. The second one is the AI talent. And uh, take, for instance, the work that Neural has done with the UK frozen food manufacturer Appetito. In this case, uh, Neurala was able to field a, a visual quality inspection AI application without the need of any AI trained personnel and uh, able to, in 20 minutes, upload a few images of good uh, frozen food trays and then be able to achieve a 100% visual inspection in their production line so they could maintain the quality standard that they are known for. So that's the second challenge, the challenge related to AI uh, expertise. The third challenge relates to the cost. And in this case, for instance, a, a very important aspect is the hardware that you need to train and maintain these AI models in the production line. And so Neural has been able to field this technology, for instance, uh, on CPU uh, in a use case uh, in automotive, uh, um, in an automotive environment where the company was designing parts uh, to be kitted and then selected for, for mounting in, in, a, in a vehicle, implemented the technology just on a single CPU without having to wait for the availability of the, of the GPU or having to pay premium for the hardware, which is really hard to obtain. Now GPUs are uh, uh, sold for not only for AI, but also for cryptocurrencies, for instance. So they are really expensive and hard to find. So now all of these elements can be solved. AI technology has stepped up to uh, enable uh, uh, implementation where data collection is really easy, where no AI expertise is needed, and where the cost really justifies uh, the, the, the end goal of implementing AI at scale. Today, in 2022, companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are building cloud-based AI platform that enable anybody, even without any AI expertise, to start to create and deploy AI models. Neurala is doing the same for the industrial manufacturing, very unique use case, where we enable uh, people on the production floor without zero, uh, without any expertise in artificial intelligence, with only limited amount of good data and only an edge device without cloud connectivity to build, maintain uh, these AI models for quality inspection directly on the production. In 10 years, many things can change. In 2032, AI will make manufacturing unrecognizable. It might even be flawless.